everybody and welcome to Flop Talk. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how to teach your bird to willingly accept nail trims. So nail trims are one of those necessary evils when it comes to parrot ownership. Obviously their nails do continuously grow just like yours do, and if they aren't running around enough, they need to be trimmed down every now and then. And having to constantly throw a towel over them, grab them, and cut their nails can be quite stressful but there are ways to actually teach your birds to willingly hand you their foot and let you cut their nails. So before we actually hop into the tutorial here, I just want to quickly talk a little bit about when you need to cut a nail, how to make sure you don't cut them too far, and all the sort of little things like that you should know before you actually go ahead and cut your bird's nails. So when you're looking at a bird's foot, inside their nail there's actually a little vein called the quick, which if you cut it will bleed and it will hurt. So when you're looking into cutting their nails, you obviously want to make sure you don't cut too far, and there's actually two very simple ways that you can tell where your bird's quick should be. Now in some cases this won't be accurate, or in cases where your bird's nail has actually overgrown and started to curl, the quick can actually grow in length. So if your bird is suffering from severe overgrown nails, please do take them to a vet so that way they can do it properly and deal with it, as opposed to you accidentally harming your bird with good intentions not to. When it comes to trimming your bird's nails, you want to make sure you don't cut the quick. And there's two very easy ways you can tell whereabouts the quick in your bird's nail is. If you have a bird with a white nail, it's super, super easy. Just hold them up to a window and you should be able to see the light shining through their nail and exposing a little vein. Now in birds that have slightly darker nails, it'll probably come across as just this kind of dark shadowy area, but in super super pale birds you'll fully be able to see a little red vein running all the way through their nail, and all you do is make sure that you just don't cut where the vein is. You just trim the little edge off and you're good to go. Now with birds like Newt, or in most other Conyers, um, their nails are black, so obviously you can't hold them up to a window and see where their vein is. So what you do in these cases is just stand your bird on a flat surface and watch how their feet lay. In a bird with a healthy nail length, their foot will be completely flat, and then the nail will just be slightly hovering above the surface. The tip of their nail is not quite touching, but just barely, just barely. And a bird with a nail that needs to be trimmed, the pads of their feet won't be completely flat, it will be slightly raised, and then the tip of their nail will be completely pressed against the surface. And that will tell you that the nail is just a little bit too long, so you just cut just enough so that way their pad of their foot will be laying flat down. Now it's very, very important that your bird is relaxed when you stand them flat on a surface for this, because if they're stressed out, what they're going to be doing is clenching their feet and not accurately telling you how long their nail is. So when their feet are clenched, it's going to make it look like the pad of their foot's lifted off and their nail's touching quite severely. But what's actually happening is their muscles are just tensed up because they're trying to grip because they're terrified. So it's very, very important that your bird is relaxed and comfortable, their feet are perfectly flat on the surface, and then you can determine exactly where you would like to cut your bird's nail. All right, so the first step here is always gonna to be to get your bird to hand you their foot. If you've watched any of the tutorials on how to teach a bird to wave and how to step up, that will pretty much give you the guide on how to get to this step here. All you're gonna do is present your hand to their bird, and when they go to step up and put one foot on you, you quickly click your clicker and give them a treat. And once they're reliably handing you your foot and very comfortably placing it on you without hesitation to quickly rip it off and pull it away, that's when you know that your bird is comfortable handing you the foot, and then you can get to the more actually nail trimming aspects of this video. I didn't want to waste too, too much time showing a thousand and one repetitions of Newt just handing me his foot, so if you want to know how to very slowly or see the actual process of slowly getting the bird to put their foot on your hand, you can hop over to the tutorial on teaching your bird to wave, and it will do the exact same thing. So once your bird is reliably just handing you their foot and they're not hesitating to quickly rip it away, what you can then do is start working on getting your bird to comfortably place their foot there and let you actually touch it. So with most birds, this is going to be quite the terrifying process and will be what takes the longest amount of time. With birds, when it comes to them actually wanting to start a fight and seriously hurt one another, they will go for each other's feet. Their feet are their most sensitive area of their body, so for them to let you touch it and handle it is actually a really big step for them. It goes against a lot of what they know. Because if they're going to start a fight, they're going to try and grab each other's feet to cause serious harm. So don't be afraid of the fact that your bird is going to move very, very slowly with this process. It took Newt two solid days of just me gently touching his toenail before we got anywhere. It takes a long time for them to understand that you touching their foot isn't an immediate sign of you wanting to hurt them in any way. So just make sure you're moving super, super slowly. This is a very difficult thing for your bird to understand, and it's gonna take some time for them to be comfortable with it. So don't go rushing them too far ahead, and don't go pushing them and getting frustrated because they're not progressing. 
progressing. They will progress. It's just going to take some time for them to get a lot more comfortable with it. So what you can see I'm doing here is I'm just very lightly touching Newt's toe. Throughout this little clip it here, I've been able to go from just touching his nail to actually fully touching and petting his feet, which is great, great, great progress. What we want out of this is to actually be able to fully manipulate and handle Newt's toes so I can eventually hold them and cut the nails. So what we're going to start doing here is making sure that we're not just focusing on one toe. Once Newt's fully comfortable with me touching his front toes, I'm going to want to move on to the ones on his back. I'm going to want to start making sure I'm applying a little bit of pressure because when you think about it, when it comes to us actually cutting the nail, we're going to be holding his feet quite firmly because we need to make sure he's not going to jerk away and potentially hurt himself when we're actually physically cutting his nails. So what I'm going to start doing here is gently holding his toes. And I'm going to start with the front ones because those are generally the easiest ones to do. But you'll find a lot of the time when you're doing this, birds are going to be a lot more hesitant for you to touch their back toes. It's just a little more awkward, it's a little more scary. So I generally always start with the front ones, make sure those are fully, fully comfortable before I really move on to touching those back toes too, too much. Because I know that's going to be a really big step for him and we're just going to try and take this one slow step at a time. So like I said, this one step took about two full days <laughs> of just sitting here lightly touching Newt's feet. But as you can see, we end up moving on to another session here where I'm not only just holding his toes, but I'm also now going to lightly start touching his nail with the other hand. And the whole point of this is to desensitize him to nail clippers coming towards his feet and me handling and touching his nails a little bit more. So I'm trying to get him used to the concept before I introduce the great big scary object that is going to be these terrifying nail clippers that he's going to want to bite and chew and not understand what's coming at his feet. So once we see that Newt here is fully, fully comfortable with me touching his toes, I'm going to introduce the nail clippers completely separate of everything else. So what I'm just going to do is hold the clippers near him, reinforce him for being positive and happy about it, not for trying to chew on them or really grab them or be afraid of them. I want him just to be comfortable with them being around. If he wants to touch his feet with them, that's awesome, which he did just randomly decide to do, but start grabbing it with his feet, which is awesome. We want his feet to be comfortable with these things going near them. We want him to know that it's not going to be scary and hurtful. We want him to know that these are just a random object that can do no harm. So he's getting reinforced for showing any sort of positivity. If you do notice that your bird decides to chew and play with them, which a lot will, it's a shiny metal object, they generally want to chew on it, it's not the end of the world to let them play with it for a little bit. But what you want to eventually end up with is the fact that the bird will ignore largely it. ignore it. All it's going to take to get them to that point is just to gently reinforce them ignoring it. And most birds will kind of get bored of it and eventually leave it alone. But if you do find that your bird is particularly struggling, what you want to then make sure you're reinforcing is anytime they don't go for it, you want to reinforce them to ignore the object. So now that I've got Newt very comfortably ignoring these nail clippers, I'm going to start implementing what we were doing before, handling his toes, and introducing the nail clippers at the same time. Now I'm not going to do anything, I'm not going to touch his foot with it right off the bat, I'm just going to have it kind of around him. I may lightly touch the end of his nail if I'm noticing that there's no hesitation towards it. I'm not going to go ahead and try and cut his nail. All I want to do is get him used to the object being associated with him putting his foot on my finger. All this is going to do is get him nice and comfortable with it. What you'll notice I'm also doing here is I'm just gently opening and closing the clippers around his toes, just in case they make any sort of squeaks or noises or anything like that, that it doesn't catch him off guard when it comes to actually cutting his nails. So it's important just to open and close them around him while he's also putting his little toes onto my finger. So once we've realized that Nude is fully comfortable with these nail clippers, what I'm going to start doing is applying some very gentle pressure just to the tip of his nail. All I'm going to do is open it around his nail and basically just let it touch him for the first couple of times. If I find he's not comfortable with that, of course we back up, then we don't progress with those steps until he's comfortable with where he's at. This part can be another tricky one because applying pressure to the nail, they immediately think that they're going to start feeling pain. The slightest bit of discomfort and birds will start to just like scream and panic even though it doesn't really hurt. So what we want to make sure we do is move extremely slowly here, so that way he realizes it, it doesn't hurt. It's not hurting him in any way, and he just needs to realize that. So what I'm going to do here is get him to hand me his foot, and then take the clippers and just slowly put them around his nail, which is why I'm using this particular style of clipper as well. Because of the style of clipper I'm using, it's incredibly easy to pop it around his nail and have it hold on to it nicely in a way that he's not gonna be able to jerk and hurt, and hurt himself, as opposed to human nail clippers, which would be flat and very easy to accidentally get around his entire toe and hurt him. So what I'm using here is, they're actually intended for cats, 
And these nail clippers are nice and round, which means that when I cut the nail, it'll cut it evenly and reduce the odds of A, it going over him toes, his toes, and B, that it won't fracture the nail and cause an infection. When you use human nail clippers or big bulky flat ones that can jerk and cut the nail, it can cause a lot of micro fractures that can actually run up the nail and cause an infection. So when you're cutting your bird's nails, you either it's best to use a nail file if you can, but if you have a bird that just doesn't take to nail files really well, uh, use cat clippers. Because they're rounded, they will reduce the amount of fractures that a nail can get and will make nail clipping a whole lot safer. So once we've got here is that Newt is quite comfortable with the nail clippers. No sort of hesitation or trying to get at them and he's letting me lightly put them around his nail. So all I'm going to start doing here is applying slightly more and more and more pressure each time. So that way he's realizing that these clippers are doing something, but they're, it's not hurting. But at this point you do want to make sure that you are getting him used to all of his toes for at the very least the first two and then work on the second two if you would prefer and just over time you take this process and gradually apply it to each and every single one of his toes like there where i apply it to his second toe just to make sure that he's fully comfortable with everything just because they're okay with the front toes doesn't generally mean that they're okay with the back toes that's a whole other process but we do want to make sure that before we go into actually cutting anything that each and every toe is kind of on the same sort of level with comfort even if you do have to spend a little bit of extra time focusing on those back toes just to get uncomfortable. So what we're going to have here, obviously I only cut one nail so I only have one clip so we got to make sure we're paying attention, is that I'm going to grab Newt's toe now that he's fully comfortable with me touching them, there's no sort of biting or leaning over trying to get me to stop, he's fully fully comfortable. I am going to very gently hold his foot and just snip the nail off nice and quick. So that is about it for teaching your bird to accept voluntary nail trims. Obviously you do then have to teach them on the other foot as well. Hi! But when you're doing this process, it is very, very important, as I say every single time, to move at your bird's pace. But this one in particular is extremely important because you don't want to accidentally end up hurting your bird in the process. If you're rushing too quickly, they're going to start jerking their feet away because they're afraid. You want to make sure that they're fully comfortable and trusting you that you're not going to hurt them and this isn't going to cause pain. I only cut the one nail in this video because that was what was easiest to demonstrate with. But you do want to apply this to every single nail, of course. Just because I've done it to one nail doesn't mean it's going to work for all the others. You need to take the time to make sure that you generally, very, very slowly acclimate him to having all of his toes touched and all of his nails trimmed. Teaching him on just one nail doesn't always mean it's going to apply to all of them. So make sure that you take the time to make sure that they're fully, fully comfortable with each and every step of the way. Alright, so that's going to about do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and that you learned something new. I'm sorry I haven't been posting to you too much lately. We actually just moved. We moved all the way from BC and drove with the birds in the car all the way to Winnipeg. So we have been on hiatus for a while because I only just got the computer plugged back in and all of that sorts of jazz. So I'm sorry that I've been away, but we're trying to get back at it. We're all just trying to find jobs and make it work at the present moment. But we're doing what we can and hopefully we will have some more videos out for you guys soon. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!